Hi everyone, uh, this is my office upstairs. This is where I tend to do my editing work. And I've had a delivery. So in front of my giant cab, which may be disappearing at some point soon, is... Da -da 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 -da. Let's have a look. This is the Celestian Alnico Cream, the 90 watt monster. So let's uh, grab that and have a look. And there it is. Let's pull this out. That is a 90 watt speaker on its own and is made, look at the size of this thing. It's heavy. And that is heavy as hell. <laughs> so I'm gonna need to break this in. So I'm gonna make another video about that and use the proper cameras. But in the meantime, I'll uh, put that back. And oh, what's this? Another one. That is whatever one spare hand is real pain. It is dark, but if I pull it out, you can see it's a red back. This is the Celestian D12H Redback. This is the new 150 watt model. And this is gonna absolutely knock my socks off. It's brand new, not been broken in, which is why I'll be able to do a video about breaking things in. So let's get down to the studio. Okay, so the lighting's a little bit one-sided at the moment because I just had some lights to the side of me that I've just flicked on for this. But yeah, this is my Zilla 212 Fat Boy, and it's currently got a 16 on Vintage 30 and a cream back end in it. Uh, we're going to be doing the demos of these two speakers with a 1x12, but that's not here yet. So what I'm going to do is, I had an idea for another video. So I'm going to take the speakers out of the Fat Boy, uh, put them to one side. Uh, put these two in because they're both 8 ohm speakers, so I think it's wide in parallel which will make this a 4 ohm cab. And I'm gonna reamp something through them, um, literally as they are because they're not broken in yet. These have just arrived. So I'm gonna test these two, uh, once on one speaker, once on the other, and then I'm gonna run some noise through it and break them in for a few hours and then see how it sounds uh, when they're broken in. Okay, here we can see the speakers that are in it are soldered in, or at least one of them soldered in, one's on uh, which comes uh, things. One's got a spade on it, so I've got some desoldering and resoldering to do. So we're gonna have to take it to our storeroom that has an extractor fan. Okay, so I'm in our storeroom now. So I've taken the speakers out of the cabinet, still with the kind of wiring harness attached. See, this, this section will be uh, your speaker jack and it was wired directly into one of them, which is wired so it goes uh, plus to plus and minus to minus so that it's wired in parallel. It looks weird at first because the speakers have been turned to face each other, but they're not out of phase because they're wired in so that both the positives are touching the positive on here and both the negatives touch the negative on here so that uh, the, these were wired this way because it was a 16 ohm cab oh, sorry, the 16 ohm speakers and I wanted it to be an 8 ohm cab because a 32 ohm cab would be silly because no guitar amp that I know of even does a 32 ohm load so we're just going to stick with the same wiring for these 8 ohm speakers which is going to make it a 4 ohm load and that's fine because the amps that I use can do a 4 ohm output Winner. It's also worth noting, I mean, it's not the, the tidiest of storerooms, but that's kind of what happens in a, a storeroom. It's all worth noting that before we begin, up here is a big input and extractor fan set that is going to this absolute beast. 
So I'm going to switch that on, make sure it's not adding any heat, we're just using it as an extraction device today. Hear the roar. Yeah. With us being underground for the studio, this is the only way to do something like this safely. And if you were going to do this at home or in your shed, I would say make sure all your windows are open and you've got proper ventilation, because solder fumes can make you quite dizzy. And if they build up too much, you'll suddenly feel very sick. Okay, so it's time to add uh, the, as you can see, I've already put the cables through for this, through the loopholes and kind of twisted them around so they're not going anywhere as I the solder. So I'll wire it in as an 8-ohm speaker and then parallel the 16 off it, kind of, well, parallel the other 8 so it becomes, no, so it becomes 4, not 16. I already worked this out and I already said it in the video, I'm just losing my mind now. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. That was a bad enough rendition that uh, I don't get a copyright strike. Okay, so black for uh, black. Let's get that through and there. All of these are pre tinned, by the way. I already uh, tinned all these wires, so I don't need to do it twice before you say it. Okay, now that I've mounted my camera properly on a magic arm, you'll be able to see me mount these speakers properly. Because um, this cab, made for me by Zilla, is a little bit unusual in that instead of uh, screwing directly into the wood, uh, we're using things called T nuts, or just a nut and bolt, depending on your perspective. Where four bolts go through four of the speaker's holes. And then these washers and nuts go on the back, which means that I'm not drilling into the wood every time. Because I change these speakers out a lot, if you've seen any of the speaker shootout demo videos that I've done over the last year. You'll have seen me keep changing and changing all the speakers, and if I was going to drill into the, or screw into the wood every time, eventually it wears away. And the speaker just falls out, which actually happened to me with a cheap 1x12 that I've got. Which was in the 412, 212, 112 video! I will be revisiting the 412, 212, 112 thing with soon uh, because, I, like I said, I've got a 112 coming from Zilla very soon. Okay, so that's in hand tight. And now for the red back. God, that's heavy. Okay, so the last thing that I've done is this is a powered mixer that's got 300 watts a side I'm only using one side of it and the speakers are now wired in so I'm not actually gonna do the burning yet uh, I'm just getting everything set up so that when the time comes it's Friday evening and I'm going home now but on su Sunday I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna leave this running for several hours but it's got a an old iPad which I happen to have lying about this is a mark one iPad so it's a piece of rubbish but it still does some jobs and I pulled up a YouTube video called 10 hours of pink noise so that's running in and it sounds like this so like I say that was just a couple of seconds of it to make sure it works but what we're actually going to do when the time comes is we're absolutely going to hammer it as loud as we feel comfortable and then leave it going in here for several hours. So, hey, that is exactly what we're going to do. 
Here ends the ballad of the Hot Post Studios, Redback and Anna Go Cream! Uh, thanks for watching. If you found this entertaining, um, stick around because in a couple of weeks we're going to be doing the release of the actual Redback and Alnico Cream videos and some 1x12 comparisons. Amongst all the many other things that we've got, digital clocking, uh, five iPad screens uh, for touchscreen for use of the DAW, uh, this weekly guitar and tech news, and thanks to our Patreons. Patreons? Our patrons on Patreon, because those guys help us out to do exactly this kind of thing. And I'm Adam Still for the Hot Pole Studios. See you soon.